that's it. Why don't you lift up those hands a little while longer? Let's ask the Holy Ghost to do exactly what he wants to do. to the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. Gospel of Mark chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 25. Such an honor and privilege to be able to worship with all of you. I appreciate so much the worship team. Appreciate all the singers and uh, all those that have been able to make this revival possible. And uh, I'm just excited about what God is doing here. Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25. Appreciate so much the hospitality, the kindness. Uh, God has been good to us. I see people are looking behind me. Is there something happening behind me right now? What, what's going on? Huh? What is it? This fan? Are you scared it's going to fall on my head or something? We're good, right? This thing has never f fallen, right? I'm good. Okay. If it, if it knocks me out, I'll just lay there and be like, no, this is all an illustration. For a miracle to happen, somebody pray me back through. Amen. Gospel of Mark chapter 5, verse 25. If you have it, say amen. amen. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Last scripture. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I want to talk on this subject tonight releasing your miracle releasing your miracle honestly i have a feeling that i'm not going to finish this message uh i feel like god's gonna give some clear direction in this atmosphere tonight uh but just for having a title for title's sake <laughs> releasing your miracle why don't you lay your bibles down Everyone close your eyes and lift up your hands and let's ask the Lord to have his way. God, I thank you for what you have been doing. I thank you for the musicians, for the singers. Lord, we bind every distraction. I ask you to help me to submit my thoughts to your thoughts. Submit my will to your will. Submit my spirit to your spirit. Lord, help us to tap into what you want to do. <clears throat> Minister to these precious people now. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord? Amen. 
Look at the person next to you and tell them it's time to release your miracle. Tell them, don't hold on to my miracle all service. Wow, that sounded so enthusiastic. Wow. Say it with some umph in you. Don't hold on to my miracle all service. Oh, wow. Now you just said that because you felt obligated. This is, this is tough here. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout, yes. yes. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I have studied the scriptures thoroughly and being enamored with everything that God did in the New Testament, specifically the incredible, incredible miracles that he did. He opened the blinded eyes. He unstopped the deaf ears. He put mud in someone's eyes and gave them sight. He healed the lame man. He healed the leprous man. So many miracles that he worked feeding the 5,000. And with, with each miracle that Jesus worked, he did it with the sole purpose of revealing more about himself. And when Jesus manifests himself, you can see in amazing ways that he uses miracles and what he does to reveal more about himself. But just as you can see about God by what he does do, you can see just as much about God by what he does not do. And I would argue one of the greatest miracles in the New Testament is not just what he did, but what he did not do. The Bible says that Jesus proclaiming to them, he said, I can pray for 12 legions of angels to come down and destroy everything. But I'm showing my power by what I'm holding back. I'm showing my glory by what I refuse to do. And I'm showing my power by what I am holding back and while I'm holding back judgment, I'm releasing mercy. And many of us can testify that God has done some great things in our lives, not just because of what he's done, but because of what he has not done done when I deserve judgment and I deserve come on to go to a devil's hell he showed his mercy to me by what he held back oh you're not hearing me yet amen I said all every single one of us deserve to die in this place you're not hearing me yet he said I'm gonna go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah but before I do I want to see if it's according to the cry that I heard. In other words, sin has a voice. And that voice cries out for judgment. Every time that you sin, it cries out to God. Come down and judge me now. But God said, I, I'm waiting in the days of Noah. This world deserves to be destroyed. But my long suffering makes me refuse from coming down and destroying destroying them come on and somebody needs to thank God for what he hasn't done instead of being frustrated over what he has not done amen I think about before I got saved and I was in high school and whenever I was in high school, I just graduated. I was on my way to drive about an hour to go and watch my cousin graduate in Eunice, Louisiana. And I wasn't saved. I wasn't living for God. As a matter of fact, I, I just committed one of the biggest sins the day before this particular day as I was driving. And as I was driving to go to my uh, cousin's graduation, I didn't have my seatbelt on. And I didn't have my seatbelt on and all of a sudden I was going 50 to 60 miles per hour a car came up in front of me and I hit that car head on and my head uh, hit the windshield put cracks in the windshield hit it 
dead on and I and I was in my car did a 360 I woke up in the passenger side uh, and what happened was uh, it was around the downtown area where there was parallel parking there was a car here and there was a car here and there was an open spot uh, and I had blood all over my head got glass all over my forehead and this car did a 360 and literally landed perfect in the parallel parking spot come on somebody I deserve to die but by his mercy he held it back because of the potential that he saw in me my lord if you only knew what god protected you from before you got here you'd be worshiping right now if you only knew what god kept you from on campus come on there's been people on campus that wanted to shoot up the campus but because come on now you serve an almighty god he held it back because of the potential that he sees in you Oh, you're not hearing me yet. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you uh, that as I think about what God, uh, how we can see even more about God, not just with what he did, uh, but what he did not do. Uh, I think about in the beginning of time before God ever created time, before he ever said, let there be. I see something about God uh, that was incredibly interesting before he ever spoke the heavens, before he ever created the cosmos before he ever formed man i see god's greatness huh, not just with what he did or what he spoke huh, but before he ever did anything i see the greatness of god huh, because before time ever existed you have to understand huh, that revelation could not exist before time existed what are you saying brother jackson god was all by himself huh, so there was no man for him to reveal himself too come on now revelation could not exist before the earth or the time uh, because God had no one to reveal himself to he was all by himself uh, and God was so self-sufficient that the Bible says uh, that he counseled with himself uh, he talked to himself uh, and you, if you feel like God sometimes you talk to yourself praise the Lord uh, don't think you're crazy just say come on I'm just made in the image of God don't judge me praise the Lord Lord. but here's what I've come to tell you now that God was all by himself and he was self-sufficient and he had no avenue to release himself so he created time and the earth to create an avenue or a channel to produce revelation he created everything to be an avenue to release himself to man and he was already Jehovah Jireh before Abraham said he was Jehovah Jireh he was already Jehovah Nisi before anybody ever discovered he was victory he was already Jehovah Raphna the Lord our healer before he ever spoke the world and to existence but it was when Abraham hungered and thirst that he discovered a revelation of Jehovah Jireh God was already that but he just liked when man recognized that he was that But the whole point of it is uh, that no man ever gave to God uh, and God gained value. Uh, and God never gave to somebody and lost value. Uh, in other words, if I give you $10, I lost $10. Uh, but if you give me $10, I gain $10. Uh, no man has ever given praise to God uh, where God got value from your praise. Uh, and God has never given you a gift uh, where he lost the current value of what he is he said i am that i am and if you praise me or not i'm god all by myself if you serve me or not some people think if they fold their arms god's gonna cry god's not gonna cry he'll just pass you over and find somebody else that wants the hunger and anointing I'm going somewhere. I'm not, I'm not praising God. 
God's like, okay, <laughs> next. Can I tell you the kingdom of God is bigger than any one person? And the minute Victor Jackson feels like he's arrived and he's something special is the moment that God will lift his hand off of me and find somebody else that's not entitled. Come on, somebody. Huh? Somebody that'll be on the backside of the desert like Moses. Huh? Somebody that'll be in the pastures like David. Huh? I don't have to be seen, but I've come to worship him. Huh? I've come to praise him. Huh? Saul, you can feel entitled if you want to, huh? but I'm not entitled to ministry. Huh? I'm hungry for God. Come on, somebody. And because I'm hungry for God, there's been a birth in me. I'm going somewhere. Amen. Hey man, I'm going, I'm going somewhere. Just give me some time. Praise the Lord. I'm building my case. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Hey, you guys are the jury. Hey Amen. I'm trying to convince you, giving you some evidence. Hear me. Check this out. This is amazing to me. Because he creates the earth to produce revelation. Heavens, heaven and earth declare the glory of God. They declare, they reveal God. Everything that you see in nature, it has one responsibility, and that is to reveal God. His Godhead is plainly seen when you look at nature. That's why he put it there, with one purpose, to produce understanding and revelation about God. And in the mind of God, in the mind of God, before he ever spoke, let there be, you were on his mind. He said, you were for ordained he said he said you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world he didn't just put your personality together he didn't just come on happen create you by happenstance huh? he did not just create the world by happenstance everything had an intention huh? John said in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God I know that I'm getting deep tonight for a moment but hold on huh? and before you start looking at me like you don't understand what I'm talking about huh? I told somebody the other day huh, that you know what if you're old enough huh, to understand biology you're old enough to understand doctrine and so there's no need for me to water it down come on somebody they're filling you with all that nonsense in your high school and on college come on now you might as well hear about the depths of the holy ghost uh, brother jackson you're getting too deep and here you are in chemistry class wow that's profound wow I never knew that. But God, God's like, like, God knows everything. You're like, he getting deep. Well, maybe that's, uh, I better chill out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> let, let me move on. Hallelujah. Let me move on to my point. Y'all trying to keep me from my point. I'm getting to my point. Like they say, can I have five more minutes? Amen. <laughs> Check this out. He creates man because he wants man to have revelation of who he is. And he creates Adam. Adam's made in his image. And when he creates Adam, he gives him dominion. He says, Adam, you have dominion. You, uh, you, I want you to name all these animals. I want you to name all these creatures, all these, all these things. And, and Adam... He gets so bored naming these animals. Something flies across his face and he's like, fly. He sees that fly get on a piece of fruit. He's like, fruit fly. And God's like, I got to find a help me for this guy. And the Bible says... That there was no help meet found for him. Listen to me. This is my most important part of this message. There was no help meet found for him. When God was looking for Adam's answer, he was looking on the outside. Until he realized, hold on, Adam's answer is not on the outside. It's already within him. I've just got to put him through 
something. A deep sleep. To get out of him. What I already put in him. And if he's willing to yield what I put in him, I'm going to create something beautiful out of what I've already placed in him. You're not hearing me yet. He said, I'm trying to take them to the next level and I'm looking around and there's nothing there. Oh, I know. It's already in him. But I've got to create a circumstance that forces him to get out what I've put in. Can I preach to you right now? That you already got what it takes to become everything God wants you to become. And he'll put you through what he got to put you through to get it out. See, when you get a call to ministry, you think, well, uh, what book do I have to read? Uh, what personal development book? Come on, somebody. Uh, God told me he's going to bless me. Uh, do I have to read an entrepreneur book? Uh, oh, I wish I had their talent. Uh, oh, I wish I could preach like that. Uh, but God is saying, uh, I've already put all the tools uh, on the inside of you. Uh, if you'd stop looking around you uh, and you'd open your eyes to what's... you've already got what it takes come on he said I'm looking for answers well your answer is already on the inside but what do you have to go through to get it out where you get your eyes come on now off of the world and things out there to try to get where God wants you to get and you say you know what I got what it takes already he said there's an open door set before you because you have a little strength you've kept my word and you've not denied my name in other words the door is open based upon what you do have and not upon what you do not have it's open because of what you do possess and not because of what you do not possess he would not have called you if he didn't put evidence already in you he would not have opened I say you've already got it. You've already got what it takes to become everything God wants you to become. He would not allow Adam to find his answer out there. I've got to put you through a deep sleep. And when he put him through a deep sleep, all of a sudden, we think Adam was like Plato or something. Like God just took the rib out. No, 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 no. It was a surgery. He had to be willing to suffer pain and suffer loss but he lost his rib but he gained a wife you're not hearing me he lost something but he gained something if you would release what you have God will make something beautiful he went through surgery he woke up out of that deep sleep like, oh, God, what did you do? Ooh. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. What I went through was worth it. When I look at what God created, out of everything that I've been through, he made something beautiful out of my loss. I lost something. I was about to get bitter because I lost something. But then I look at what I gained. God said, I got your answer, God, but I got to put you through a problem first. Huh? Because in every problem, there is a seed of an answer. Huh? In every heartache, there is a seed of healing. Huh? In every trouble, there is a seed of triumph. Huh? In every pain, there is a seed of power. Huh? And God has put a seed in your situation huh? to get you from stop looking out there and provoke and cultivate and develop what's already here. Oh, if I'm helping somebody, wave a hand right now. Wave a hand if I'm helping you. 
Uh, you've already got it. You've already got it. The disciples got in a storm, and when they got in the storm, they went find Jesus, and Jesus was in the bottom of the boat. Jesus was the Prince of Peace. He was peace. Watch this. But when the storm hit, the peace that was in him got forced to come out of him. He was already peace, but when the storm hit, it provoked him to say, peace be still. And what was within him overpowered what came against him. I'm preaching to some sleeping giants right now. You've been sleeping in the boat. Come on now. Holding on to your gifts, your talents. Feeling like you've got nothing to offer the kingdom. But God said, hold on. Let me create a situation right now that'll force you to stop admiring everybody else and what I'm doing with them. But it'll make you look at what's on the inside and say that you've already got it. You've already got it. This church has already got it. This youth group's already got it. But what you got to go through to get it out? Since you're not willing. Yeah. For too many people say, oh, I'm running for my calling. Well, how'd that work out? Well, I went through all types of storms and hell. Until I finally started doing what God put in me to do. And every time you try to put it away and say, no, it can't be me. Not with my struggles, not with my pains, not with my mistakes. Something in every altar call still pricks you. And says, you know, you, you know what I put in you. And some of you are afraid to even pursue it for fear of being prideful. Oh, I'm helping somebody right now. I don't want to pursue it, Brother Jackson, because how big of things that God has placed in me, I'm scared that people are going to think that, that, I'm, that I'm prideful or something. Well, you'll go through enough storms until you get delivered from what people think about you. And the only thing that matters is I've got to get this out. I've got to release this. I've got an anointing that I've tried to contain for too long. I need to release it. And it's interesting because the first temptation that Satan brought to Adam and Eve was Satan tempted Eve over what she did not have. So he could come and steal what she did have. Because what she did have was enough for eternal life. Satan will tempt you over what you're missing so you can stop guarding what you have because what you have is enough. Watch this. Satan will convince you that you don't have it so you can spend your whole life looking for it. I'm preaching to somebody right now. He tells you, you don't have it. Look at your background. Look at your failures. Look at your, come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you. I'm helping you. Uh, look, look at, look, look. You don't have it. And what? You start looking out there for it. Start looking out there. I need, I need another. I need, I need somebody to help me out there I need it's not because I don't have it I, but God's saying if you'd ever just look at what I've put in you what's in you will drive you to become what I told you that you would become and as long as you're just spending all your time admiring what's out there you'll never become what you're supposed to become but if you could ever look on the inside 
Say, God has given me the tools to be everything God wants me to be. And if I can just cultivate it. Grass looks good on the other side when the grass that you are on isn't cultivated. You're in a barren land and you're looking at the green land. And God's like, well, if you break up the fallow ground. Well, that takes work. I know. Come on now. Now, now can I help you? I, 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 I put impartation on you. I, I put a post on this a couple of days ago. I said, you know, we can, God can impart gifts in a moment. But he cannot and will not impart work ethic. I got a gift, I got a gift, I got a gift. I know, what are you doing with it? Because your gift won't get you there if you're not cultivating it. Enamored with others' gifts where you're not working on your gift. Come on, somebody. If I could just get the right connection. I, no, 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 no. That connection ain't going to help you. You developing what's in you is what's going to help you. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody. Clap your hands to the Lord right now. I feel like I'm helping somebody here. So Satan tempts Eve over what she doesn't have. So she falls because she is trying to possess something that isn't hers. So watch this. When they fell, God said, I got the answer to your problem, Eve. And he gave her the proto-evangelon, the first good news. He said, the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. That was the first good news. It was a prophecy of Jesus Christ coming and destroying the works of Satan. And he said, the answer to your problem is coming right out of your loins. Don't look for the answer to your problem and anywhere else, Eve. I've already put in you the seed that is necessary huh, to reverse every curse that has come your way. You've already got it. Yeah, man, I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited right now because I feel like I'm helping somebody so much right now. Tell me, let, let, let me tell you something. I, I've always battled with this. I've, I've always battled with this. Because for 11 years of my life devoted, I was an athlete. And as an athlete, my problem was that if I just won a big game, and you come and ask me, how did the game go? I'm not even wanting to talk about that game because I'm preparing myself for the next game. They come, hey man, you just won a championship. How do you feel? Oh, I got to prepare for the next game. I got to prepare. I'm not going to be satisfied. I got to prepare. Watch this. Because I was so overwhelmed with what I did not have, I never took time to value what I did have. And my pursuit over what I was missing, I neglected what I possessed. And that's something that I had to battle with when I came into the church. Because when I came into the church, God had given me all these visions and all these promises all these prophecies and man i'm working hard and i'm i'm giving myself i'm working on this golf course folks uh, no i wasn't playing golf i was working on that golf course uh, maintenance my mom always told me i i used to get mad at her but she said boy you ain't made for outside work she see me cut the lawn and mess the whole lawn up. And she'd be like, look, you, you just get an office job. 
Mama, you teasing me. Well, guess what? After I give up my scholarships, after I give up college basketball, give up my uh, future, I'm, I'm expecting God to open the windows of heaven for me. Here, son. But you know what he said to the golf course? Here, son. What, what, that didn't line up with the vision that we're going on this golf course maintenance outside laying sod with people there that didn't even their highest education was like middle school and I got an associate's degree and I'm laying sod got my long sleeves on got, got my pants on and it was so hot out there you know, I tried to be cool wearing the baseball cap, but my neck started burning. And contrary to popular belief, black people do tan. <laughs> my neck started turning charcoal. So I did the most humiliating thing of my life. I had a Honduran friend. I said, bro, give me your sombrero. Waking up 4 o'clock in the morning, every morning, working on a golf course till 3 in the afternoon, wearing a sombrero. People golfing like, hey, you with the sombrero, move out of the way. It's like, okay, okay. And I was so miserable my first three years in church. I'm being honest with you. I was so miserable until the Lord had to teach me. He said, You've got to learn to be content with where you are. And if you do not learn to be content with what you have, I will not trust you with what you do not have. Until you learn to value where you are, I can never bring you where you are not. And I'm preaching to frustrated people. Ministry not going as fast as you'd like. Doors not opening as much as you'd like. Thought you'd be further. Things not happening. Look at everybody put their poker face on. Y'all funny. You're funny. As soon as I say that, everybody's like. Y'all fake it real good. Y'all fake it real good. And frustration sets in. Three stages of growth when God puts a promise in you. Number one is frustration where a lot of you are. But the next one is learning to be content with where you are. And once you learn to be content with where you are, the third stage is where God takes you, opens a door out of your comfort zone with where you are. And you learn to be content. Now, 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 we've liked to paint contentment as a bad word. Can I give you a revelation? Contentment is not complacency. Some people say, I'm just never happy. I'm just never. Well, that's not biblical. So, don't worry, I'm getting there. Give me some time. But somebody... They say that the best way to climb a mountain is to take it in stages. And after each stage, rest, eat, sleep. He said that is the most effective way to climb a mountain. But many of us, they say, would try to just climb the whole mountain up. Reach their destination when they're better, they could die. I got a friend who climbs mountains and as he climbs small peaks, he has to take a doctor with him. Why? Because when you reach a certain stage, your heartbeat changes. And you have to stay at that level long enough for your heart and your body to acclimate to the level. But we want to, I'm frustrated. I got to go. I got to uh, uh. And that only produces more frustration. And so contentment 
is once you reach a stage, watch this, rejoicing on how far you've come. Watch this. And building a tent on that stage to acclimate to the weather and never losing sight of the peak and the journey and the destination. Complacency is building a house there. And losing sight of where you're supposed to go. And so, what I had to learn, these are life principles that are going to help you. What I had to learn was to be content and rejoice over what I have. And thank God for what I have and value what I have. I remember uh, several months ago, I was praying and fasting. I was doing all this prayer and fasting. And then I get in the church service and I preach and it'd be like, people look at me like, hold on, I know I just prayed. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fasting more than I've ever fasted. I'm, I'm praying more than I've ever prayed and nothing's happening. And look what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Victor, let me tell you what the problem is. You're fasting to get something. Watch this, that you already have. He said, you don't pray and fast to get the anointing. You pray and fast to release the anointing. He said, you don't pray to get it. You pray to release it. You don't fast to get it. You fast to release it. Didn't John say the anointing abideth in us? So the anointing is already in you. You've just got to fast to get it out of you. You've just got to pray to get it out. Didn't Jesus say that the kingdom is not low here, low there? He said the kingdom dwells in you. But you've got to learn how to pray and fast to release the kingdom. The kingdom is already there, but the flesh can hold the kingdom hostage. And the flesh can hold your miracle hostage. And the flesh can hold your anointing hostage. But when you die out to flesh, your miracle starts seeping out. Your anointing starts seeping Keeping out uh, the kingdom. Can I preach to this church? You already got it. You just gotta release it. Oh, somebody clap your hands in this house right now. I say, you've already got dominion. Stop praying for dominion. You've already got dominion. Just fast and pray that God would allow you to release it. He gave you everything you needed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He gave you everything you needed with the gospel. Now fast until you get the gospel out. Pray until you get the kingdom out and release the kingdom. Somebody needs to be, get on a praise break right now. Somebody needs to clap their hands unto the Lord and lift up their voice unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, help me. You don't have to go on your job or on your campus and pray for dominion. You've already got dominion. You've got to go on that campus and say, I've come to release that dominion. I've come to, I've come to get it out. What God has put in me, I've come to take over. I've come to take over the job. I've come to take over the campus. I've already got got it and Satan's gonna try to tell you you haven't prayed enough you haven't fasted enough to get it well I've already got it I just gotta get it out come on somebody lift up their voice come on somebody clap your hands unto the Lord Come on, somebody shout if you know that you got it. Huh? Somebody praise them that you know that you got it. Huh? 
Somebody lift up your voice if you know that you got it. Hey, ala mo koshanda la la makaya. Ala la 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 mo sandele la mahaya. Hallelujah. Stop letting Satan tell you that you don't have dominion. Stop letting Satan tell you that you don't have the anointing. Stop letting Satan tell you that if you don't pray six hours a day, that God could never use you. You're not hearing me right now. God didn't put that stipulation on you. You put that stipulation on you. You just need to do what you gotta do to release everything that he's placed in you. And I'll pray as long as I gotta pray to get it out of me. I'll fast as long as I gotta fast to get it out of me. I'll praise him. I may look like a fool, but as long as what's in me gets out of me, I don't care anymore. Uh, my Lord, you got it. Just got to release it. And here's how you release it. In the text that I read to you, can you put up Gospel of Mark chapter 5 and verse 33. In the text that I read to you, this woman tries everything. And she's nothing better, and she rather grew worse. She has an issue of blood. She presses through the crowd and she touches his garment. When she touches his garment, she is healed. She's made whole. And the Bible says that after she got her healing that Jesus said who touched me who touched my clothes and he looked around about him and finally look the woman comes watch this this is the most this is the seal of my message but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth she confessed to him what happened next verse watch this this is a Amazing to me. Uh, look, and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, he said whole two times. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Why did he say it two times? Those are two different Greek words. The first word whole, so diesel, which literally means healed. Your faith hath made thee healed. But then he says, go in peace and be whole. That's a different word. Whole. That's a different Greek word that literally means uh, be increased in health. Uh, she had faith and she got her healing. But when she confessed, and rejoiced over what already happened. He released to her the rest of the miracle where she was increased in health, where she was better than she ever was before she ever even got sick. When she learned to confess what was already done, he released to her the rest of the miracle. Can I preach to this church right now? Can I tell you why you've been frustrated? Can I tell you why you've been battling? Can I tell some of you youth why you've been in a cycle? Because you have not took time to rejoice over what has already happened. So God cannot release to you the rest of the miracle. You've so frustrated uh, that you haven't gone uh, as far as you want in your calling uh, where you have forgotten to rejoice uh, that you are called uh, you have forgotten to rejoice come on somebody where you are right now uh, and he will not release you to the next level until you thank him for the level that you're currently on everybody stand on your feet and clap your hands unto the Lord Amen. 
He will not release you to the next level uh, until you learn to thank him for the level you're on. Uh, until you learn to thank him for how far you've come. Uh, I'm preaching to people uh, where God wants to release to you the next level. Uh, but he is waiting for you to be grateful for the level that you're on. Uh, and too many of us go from answered prayer to answered prayer. Uh, you get an answered prayer and you don't thank him for it. Uh, you just move on to the next prayer on your prayer list. Come on now. Uh, okay he answered that one on to the next one huh? and you get frustrated when the next one isn't answered huh? but if you took time to thank him huh, for the answers that you've already gotten huh, he will release to you I want everyone to come to the front clapping your hands to the Lord everyone come to the front and clap those hands unto the Lord Come on, clap those hands as you come forward. Clap those hands as you come forward. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands unto the Lord right now. So I want every single one of you to think about what God has done for you in your life. Think about the calling that he's given you. Think about the answers prayers in the past. Think about how far that you've come. And in a moment, as you think about what God has done and you confess to him what he's done, he is going to release to you your miracle. But in order to unlock the next level, in order to unlock the next dimension, You've got to rejoice and thank him for where you are. And as you rejoice over where you are, I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. As you rejoice over where you are, uh, what's in you, that's it, grab the person's hand next to you. As you rejoice over what God has done in you, what's in you is going to start coming out of you. And what's in you is going to be released on the person next to you. The miracle that's in you, when you rejoice over it, it's going to be released on the person next to you. It's going to be released in this atmosphere. If they've had problems as you rejoice over what God has done in you, what's in you is going to be released on the person next to you where it becomes the answer to their problems. Uh, as you rejoice over where you are, God is going to release in you on the person next to you where they get healed, where they get touched, uh, where they get a blessing. But you've got to open up your mouth and rejoice to the Lord right now. Uh, everybody, I want you to thank God and rejoice uh, over where God has placed you, what God has done in you, what God has done in your family. Uh, and I want you to thank him. And as you thank him, something is going to be released uh, in this atmosphere come on that's it thank him thank him thank him come on come on thank him worship him God I thank you for healing in my body God I thank you for the ministry you've called me to God I thank you for what you've done in my life come on that's it something's beginning to be released in this atmosphere but it is according to if you can thank him for where you are right now if you can put your frustrations aside and thank him for what Come on, that's it. I feel frustration lifting off of this place. I feel frustration lifting off of your mind. I feel frustration lifting off of your body. But you've got to worship him for where you are. And he's going to release something in this auditorium. 
Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, that's it, rejoice. Come on, that's it, rejoice. I feel something getting released in this place. I feel something getting released in this youth group. I feel something getting released on the person next to you. But you've got to worship him. Come on, have you thanked him yet? Come on, if you rejoice over what has happened, he's going to release what hasn't happened. That's it, that's it. Now I want you to lay your hands on the person next to you. And I want you to release them. Release the Release the miracle that God's placed in them. Lay your hands on their head and start releasing some things into the atmosphere. Start speaking those things that are not as though they were. Start prophesying over them. Start Come on, open up your mouth and release it. Come on, open up your mouth and speak it. Come on, open up.
it, that's it. I want you to find somebody else across this altar. I want you to move across this altar. Let the Spirit lead you. You've got an encouraging word in your mouth. You've got something in you that you need to get out of you and pray for somebody else. I want you to move across this altar. Find somebody else to lay your hands on. Find somebody else to pray with. Ladies, find another young lady to hug and pray and, and speak words of affirmation in her ear. Young man, find another young man and link up with him huh? and speak a word over them and their ministry. You've got a word in you that you've got to get out of you. Huh? You've got something in you that you've been timid about. You've been holding on to giftings and callings, huh? but it's time to release it in this atmosphere. Huh? We're not holding back anymore. That's it. Find somebody else to pray with. Huh? Now open up your mouth and speak over them. Huh? Open up your mouth and speak life. Huh? Open up your mouth and speak life. Command doubt to leave and lose faith. 